Coming off the ball by Clausen. And you don't need to tell them how big today's game is. Michigan, Notre Dame, fierce rivalry. Notre Dame, Michigan, it's, it's all about emotion, it's passion. It's Michigan rivalry is, is something special. It's good! Randy Hamilton is coming! Shane Walsh and Notre Dame has beaten Michigan. You got two great programs going at it head to head. The Irish are going to pull off an upset, beating Michigan in the big house. The Wolverines are laying it to the Irish. This is a huge rivalry. We're going to go out there and lay everything out on the field. Under coach Rich Rodriguez, the Wolverines are sporting a new look as well. But no matter each team's philosophy, one thing's for sure. When Notre Dame and Michigan meet, a classic game is likely to unfold. You're watching the Vonage Notre Dame countdown to kick off, and just a few moments ago, here come the Irish. Notre Dame against their old rivals, Michigan. Coach Charlie Weiss, 1 0 coming into today's game. And we'll be back with the Vonage Notre Dame countdown to kick off in just 30 seconds. Looking to voice your opinion about the Irish? Then watch Irish Live, presented by Vonage, every Thursday at noon Eastern, exclusively on NBCSports.com. Catch highlights, interviews, analysis, and even call in live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Notre Dame Stadium. Tom Ammon and Pat Hayden on this a muggy afternoon, an afternoon that uh, began with a lot of rain. In fact, it was this morning. A look at this, about 9.45, the rain pelting down here at Notre Dame Stadium. And uh, the tarp was on the field which protected the turf, but look at the water building up on top of it. Now here's a look at the radar, the Doppler radar showing the rain staying north of South Bend at the moment, so perhaps we've dodged a bullet there. And uh, if there should be heavy rain, what do you look for? Well, you know, I think there's, gonna, there's expected really bad right. weather later on today. And I think, you know, you worry about ball security. That's what coaches always worry about. You, it's not just quarterbacks and running backs. It's snappers and punters. And generally in these kind of games, special teams play a larger role. Well, in their opener, Notre Dame struggled for three quarters before putting San Diego State away in the fourth quarter, and it's that fourth quarter that Charlie Weiss is hoping to build on. He's stressed that with his team all week long. And, Pat, there were some positives as he talks to Lou Holtz there, who's being yeah. honored today. There were some positives for the Irish despite the struggle. Well, if you're a half-full kind of glass, the glass kind of guy, how about pass protection? No sacks allowed after allowing 58 last season. That's a large improvement. Jimmy Clausen played well, particularly in the fourth quarter, bringing his team from behind, throwing two touchdowns when they really needed. They found a deep threat in Golden Tate. That is very, very key as well. And then Armando Allen just kind of did everything well. Big all-purpose day, 158 yards. And so I think they found a lot of things to be positive about, as well as, Tom, I think the best special teams play we've seen in the Charlie Weiss right. era, and the defense played particularly well in the fourth quarter. Well, Michigan opened the season with a loss to Utah, then beat Miami of Ohio. Their new coach is Rich Rodriguez, who came over from West Virginia, where he had so much success with that high-powered spread offense. So far at uh, Ann Arbor, however, he has not had a very potent offense. It's the defense that's the strength of this Wolverine team. You're right, Tom. It's, uh, the offense is in transition, but the defense, boy, look out. These guys can really come up, particularly their front four, nine sacks on the year. Remember last year's game right. against Jimmy Clausen? They had eight sacks against the Irish last year. The up to their old tricks again this season. And you know, we said some good things about that Irish offensive line, giving up no sacks last week. This is a much sterner test for the offensive line today. I think the key matchup today is that offensive line of Notre Dame against that defensive front of Michigan. All right, one of the great rivalries in college football, Michigan and Notre Dame. Lou Holtz being honored with his 1988 national championship team at Notre Dame Stadium today, talking to Coach Weiss before the game. You've been watching the Von H Notre Dame countdown to kickoff. And we'll be back to Notre Dame Stadium right after these messages from your local NBC station. Notre Dame football is presented to you by Coke Zero. And just a few moments ago, the official.
official coin toss with Lou Holtz taking his place with the Irish. As we mentioned, being honored today along with his 88 national championship team taking part in the coin toss, which Notre Dame won, by the way. And the Irish have elected to defer. There it is. I think uh, you think he brought Mark May along with him? I don't think so. <laughs> I think he was glad to get away from it, probably. <laughs> Quite so Mich Michigan will receive Sissoko and Shaw are the deep men as Kirkhart picks it off for Notre Dame. Ball still loose right at the one, finally picked up by Sissoko, and he'll be stopped inside the 10-yard line. Well, we just talked about ball security. While it's not raining today, it was pouring earlier today, and Sissoko... Right they, off his pad, huh? Yeah, right off his pad. Easy uh, catch. Just missed. Then, then couldn't find it. And then David Gruden, number 27. You're going to see David Gruden, number 27, and number 37, Mike Anello, chucking down the field like this on every special teams and making most of the tackles. The top was on the field all morning during that heavy rain. It came off about 12.30. It hasn't rained since. But Michigan in a hole here at their own nine-yard line. Stephen Threet is their quarterback. Play action fake, Threet with a toss to Matthews, and Greg Matthews to the 15-yard line. Stopped by Terrell Lambert. And there are the numbers on three to his a freshman. He's a sophomore academically, a transfer from Georgia Tech. And you'll see the no huddle all day from uh, the Wolverines. It's Paul Rich Rodriguez's style and offense. And usually in the shotgun as they are now. Here's a handoff to McGuffey. Sam McGuffey strung out by Notre Dame, but he crosses the 20, and that's a Michigan first down. Brian Smith, the tackle for Notre Dame, as we look at the Adidas starting lineups for the Michigan Wolverines with McGuffey just getting that carry. Odom's the chief receiving threat for the Wolverines. That's their offensive line. Untested, really, in the offensive line. Yeah, and Perry Dorstein, the left tackle, gets his first start. First and 10 from the Michigan 21. McGuffey, McGuffey breaking free for the moment, crosses the 30 and has another Michigan first down before David Bruton tracks him down, a gain of 11. Adidas starting lineups for the Irish, Ryan Williams, Koontz, and Neal, as this is the defense against the spread with Brian Smith and Maurice Crum at the linebackers, and then five defensive backs, McNeil, Bruton, McCarthy, Lambert, and Sergio Brown, one of the heroes of the opening win. Michigan moving the ball, though. They're out to the 32. The drive began at their own nine. Hand off. Nothing there from McGuffey that time. Loss of a two or three yards. Penetration by Pat Coons. Nice play by number 96, Pat Koontz, the middle of the screen, playing more inside today. Ordinarily, he's a defensive end, but as you said, Tom, they're playing their spread defense. He was back to his old position, which he played last year at nose tackle. Almost a slip by McGuffey as much as a tackle. Second down and 12. Three wide receiver formation, shotgun. Reach pass, a little sidearm, there's a flag down. It's to the tight end, Carson Butler, who's collapsed at the 35-yard line by Brian Smith. Umpire threw that flag, right, Tom? You know what that means? Oh, generally, yeah. Personal foul, illegal chop block, number 50 offense. See, the first drop didn't he did. Yeah. As you crossed me up. Well, that's what they're supposed to do. Those umpires look for the holdings and look at the illegal chop blocks. Usually that means one guy is engaged and another offensive lineman chops the other guy. There in the offensive line. It's David Molk, the uh, redshirt freshman center. They're just kind of being chopped. Pat Koontz. It's one of those uh, safety calls, right? Trying to protect the defensive lineman from the chop block, rolling out knees. Brandon Miner in at running back now for the Wolverines. Second and 27 from their own 15. Three swings it to Miner. Got it. It's on the turn. Notre Dame covers it. That's your, it's, it is. it's a complete pass and a fumble. And Notre Dame has recovered. It's Brian Smith that makes the fumble recovery. Well, the issue is, is it a backward pass or was it a backward pass? He's right on the 10-yard line. That is a backward backwards pass. pass. No doubt about it. Good call. Good hustle by Brian Smith. One of the playmakers on their defense. Just a little bit behind Brandon Miner. 
tackle. It probably should, should have been caught, but a heads-up play by Brian Smith. So the backward pass bobbled, recovered by Notre Dame. Started with good special teams coverage in the kickoff, right, Tom? It set him up. Two tight end formation. Robert Hughes is the running back. Fake to Hughes, Clawson. Scrambling for the end zone, threw it away. Intended for Camara, who was closest to it anyway, but it looked like Clawson maybe threw it away. You know, Charlie Weiss said to us yesterday, hey, we want to score early, very quickly. And he got great field position. Presented with a golden opportunity here, but misfiring on a first down pass. It'll be second down and 10 from the 11 after the backward pass. The lateral recovered by Notre Dame. Michael Floyd, the freshman down here, getting the start today. Got a touchdown last week. Armando Allen in it running back, trying to pick up the rushers there. Clawson scrambling. Gets to the outside and will be caught from behind. That, and he fumbled. Still waiting. And it will be Notre Dame's ball. John Thompson knocked the ball loose from the scrambling Jimmy Clawson, but the Irish able to recover. Hey, this is one thing we didn't see much last year from Jimmy Clawson. Here's the ball comes out. Hey, Clawson's a great job of recovering it. Strong hands. That's the ball well secured, but a good tackle by John Thompson. But, you know, good avoidance by Clawson to start to play off time. It really should have been a sack. What it does is set up a third down. Six yards to go from the seven. They can make a first down without scoring. Boston's pass. That'll be interference called in the end zone intended for the freshman Michael Floyd. That's where he caught the touchdown pass last week. And Morgan Trent of Michigan will be called for pass interference. A true freshman, Michael Floyd, came in here with all kinds of expectations. Number 14 defense. Morgan Trent. Place on the two-yard line, automatic first down. And, you know, after just one game, you, you think, hey, maybe maybe Tommy's kind of lived up to those, right? He caught the touchdown pass last week. First freshman ever to score the first touchdown of the season for the Irish, holding their uh, pass interference on Morgan Trent. You know, he's a big-body guy, and you're going to have to battle him down there inside the 15-yard line. So automatic first down, the ball of the two, first and goal. Hughes to the outside for the touchdown. Asaf swapped the fullback, sprinting with a good block, and Robert Hughes scores the touchdown. Think about that series, though, Tom. Special teams play first, right? Then the defensive turnover, and then they punch the ball in. All three of their units contributing to that touchdown. Aided by some Michigan penalties, we should indeed, have. Indeed, indeed. Who holds likes it as Brandon Walker will attempt the extra point. Walker hit all three of his point after touchdown attempts last week. And this one is good as well. There's a look at Robert Hughes, who scored his first touchdown of the season. Got to the outside, nobody was there. 7 nothing, Irish. We represent... Notre Dame football is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero, real Coke taste and zero calories. By Adidas, impossible is nothing. By ADT, security services, always there. And by Charles Schwab, premium service, expected, don't pay for it. Talk to Chuck, Charles Schwab. Well, Michigan fumbles a backward pass. Notre Dame recovers a key Interference penalty in the end zone, and Notre Dame scores. Charlie Weiss saying the important thing, the key to this game, score early. He's gotten his wish. Burkhardt's kick is short. That's again game. by Shaw this time. <laughs> and Notre Dame is recovered. Guess who got it? Number 37. Mike Anello. Mike Anello, the special team wonder for the Irish. And Michigan is just handing these opportunities Absolutely. to Notre Dame early. You know, two mishandled kicks to start the game. But it was number 37, 
I believe he's going to come up with a bottle in that pile. Mishandled right there. It really easily should have been caught. Look at him and diving that, yeah. right in there, just underneath Shaw, who was trying yeah. to recover. High school wrestler, right, as he yeah. told us last week, out of Chicago. Former walk-on, given a scholarship a few weeks ago by Charlie Weiss. <laughs> and a cult hero, as Coach Weiss said, on the Notre Dame campus. You know, he deserves it, though. Yeah. I mean, he, he is absolutely earned. He's not, you know, like Rudy, who comes in and plays occasionally. He plays on all the special teams for the Irish and has really earned his scholarship. So from the 14, another big opportunity for the Irish. Michigan continues to dig themselves a hole. Drop back, Clawson, first down for the freshman Floyd, but over his head and incomplete. You know, it's just, with you know, just speaking about Mike Anello, it's just amazing to me that a guy like Mike Anello, who is 5'9 and 180 pounds, Tom, can get down the field first. He's not the fastest guy, right, by a long stretch. Everybody knows he's making up a bunch of the tackles, yet Mike Anello, you watch him today on punts and kicks. There he is. But, Unbelievable. What was it your coaches always used to say, though? Desire. You've yeah, got to want to do it. And, and believe me, he wants it. Great student, too, 3.9 in finance, on his way to Wall Street next year, probably. Hand it off to Hughes, Robert Hughes. And the fans get their chance to say, not boo, but Hughes. Yeah. And for Michigan, if you're a Michigan fan, you know, this is an opportunity where that stout front seven really has to step up on this third and six and force a field goal attempt. That's the strength of the Michigan defense, lauded by the Michigan coaches and the Notre Dame coaches alike. Tough front seven. It's third down and six. He's gone to Michael Floyd in this, in this situation early. Look so at the top. Short drop. They pattern. Camaro. Touchdown. And Tom, what a difference. A week makes. Remember they tried that same play last week that was intercepted? And Charlie Weiss was talking to us about it, you know, last week. He said, you know, Jimmy probably shouldn't have thrown it, but Camara really should have gone up and got after it. He did that time. So they worked on that play all week long. A great start for the Irish. Camara, who had one bounce off his pads for an interception last week, did a good job of getting that knee down in the end zone. And Walker's extra point is good. Two big miscues for the Wolverines. Two touchdowns for the Irish. 14-0, Notre Dame. I'm Reggie. Lou Holtz and his 1988 National Championship team out on the field while we were away and being cheered by the crowd. They picked a good time to come out as the Irish <laughs> went up 14 to nothing. And they beat Michigan on their way to that national championship as Ryan Burkhart kicks off. Shaw, who fumbled the last one, not out there. It's Harrison and Sissoko. Harrison out of his own end zone, and he is stopped short of the 15 by David Boot, who's the other special teams man. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Notre Dame team this far, it's early, but boy, they played well in all three phases. Opening kickoff, you see David Boot, another special teams extraordinaire player, making the play. And then the defense, the second phase, right? Backwards pass, Brian Smith jumps on it, sees it, reads it, has a quick enough uh, get up to get there. And then back on special teams, a muffed kickoff return by the Irish and Mike Anello. All five, nine of them, about five, eight of him over the ball. <laughs> 14 yard line, Michigan puts it into play. Steven Threat still a quarterback in the shotgun. Handoff, McGuffey stopped for a loss. And the Irish defense fired up Pat Coons and company. Don't Brian you, Smith there, too. Excuse me, Tom. Don't you get the feeling that Pat Coons plays a little bit better inside rather than a defensive end? He just looks more comfortable. He's inside playing kind of a nose tackle, or what they call a three technique uh, position, more than he does as a defensive end. Senior made, from Indianapolis. Yeah, made two good plays so far in this game from the inside. Second down and 13. Irish show blitz from Crum and back out of it. Smith is coming on the blitz. Three, passing it to McGuffey. And McGuffey will be taken out of bounds by Terrell Lambert. Sam McGuffey, kind of a YouTube sensation. You know, kind of had a really terrific high school career. 
And, uh, you know, their leading rusher thus far and leading receiver. Came in with an average of 3.3 yards of carry and five receptions for 54 yards. But again, Big third down here now, yeah, third and 11. And Stephen Threat really has to be careful here, the quarterback for Michigan. Backed up in your end zone at third and long with a team that's really getting after you. Third and 11, the pass is caught. Greg Matthews catches it in traffic and has a Michigan first down, a 14-yard gain. That is one heck of a catch and then a throw by Stephen Threat. Good protection. Barry Dornstein, the left tackle, but I tell you, he, he kind of threaded the needle in between three blue jerseys, right? He did. And Greg Matthews, injured, didn't play last week. At 6-3, just goes up and gets it for the first big play by Greg Matthews. And held on to it, despite the vicious hit. Hand to McGuffey. McGuffey still on his feet. Nice cutback. Across the 35 to the 37-yard line, close to another first down. His Notre Dame defense last week. If you look in the inner Notre Dame fan looking for optimistic things, they were pretty good against San Diego State. He broke up eight passes, had an interception, forced a fumble, got after the quarterback, only hit, allowed 71 rushing yards. Tom, as I said at the top, I thought the special teams played as well as we've seen for Charlie Weiss over the last four years. McGuffey able to get first down yardage. First down for the Wolverines, 38 yard line. Here's McGuffey again. Cuts up and has four yards on first down. Kerry Neal with the tackle. As the Wolverines try to put together some first downs, today's yellow first down line is brought to you by Xerox. Michigan needs a nice sustained drive, sustained drive if they can get one here after the two well, turnovers yeah. led to two high scores. Or at least flip the field position, right? Yeah. Second down and six. Reed looking to the sideline where they may be changing the play call. Now he does change it. Got Let's his teammates time. know. Seven on the play clock. Looks to the right, throws that way, and got oh. away with it. We That's an accurate throw by Stephen Three because he had somebody right in his face. I think it was Brian Smith. He looked that way all the way, telegraphed it, but still the timing was good enough to Daryl Stoneham to make the completion. Brian, uh, actually it was Kerry Neal, number 56, not number 58. Kerry Neal coming off the edge. But good throw, two good throws we've seen by Stephen Threat in this drive. Now third down in a yard. And first time you could really see him under center. And in the eye, Moongross the fullback, McGuffey the tailback. McGuffey didn't make it, stopped in his tracks. As three slipped as he made the handoff, and McGuffey never able to get to the line of scrimmage. Oh, Justin Brown, boy. He was in the backfield. Yeah, Justin Brown was there. You see Brian Smith as well. Yeah, number 94 really blew his guy back. Justin Brown kind of alternating at the right defensive end. So we've well, seen good defense line play by the Irish. Justin Brown, Pat Coontz, Harry Neal. So Zoltan Mesko will come on to punt for the Wolverines. And that's a look at Armando Allen, who's deep for the Irish. Uh, the Irish had to call timeout because they weren't sure how many, they didn't have the right punt return team on. And Allen was late coming on the field for his part. So Charlie Weiss not happy about that. He is happy about the score. Irish leading Michigan 14 nothing, having to take a timeout to get the correct punt return team on. Now they're ready, and Mesco ready to punt it for the Wolverines. He's going to keep it. Keep it. Mesco has a first down. Still on his feet and out of bounds around the 40-yard line of Notre Dame. Chased out by Kyle McCarthy, but 14 yards. Mesco the putter with the trick play from Coach Rob. And Big first down for the Wolverines. That, that's good scouting and, and then execution, right? You just don't make these things up. And uh, while the Irish have had a couple big special teams plays on kickoffs, this was a, a lapse. And yep. Mesco does a nice job. It was a you know perfect call, not afraid to call a perfect part of the field. And a perfect time to call it, too, because it was obvious because of the timeout that Notre Dame was a little confused about who should be on the field. Well, and they also needed a spark, right? They, the, the Wolverines really needed something positive to build on. First down, Michigan at the Irish 41. McGuffey. Still on his feet, driving ahead and then thrown back 
Forward progress to about the 41 or 42 yard line. David Bruton, the man that finally put the hit on him, then Maurice Crump came along to help. And Sam McGuffey, you know, he's only 5'11, 185 pounds. Looks like he grew up eating airline food, but they, they think he is kind of their big play threat. They think he's a home run hitter from that tailback position. They call that position their super back. Ran for over 5,800 yards in his high school career. And from Cypress, Texas. Fake it to him this time. Three going deep down the sideline. And it is. Still waiting for the signal. Caught. And so they hit the ground. Hit the ground. Incomplete. Greg Matthews streaking down. He says challenging. He's saying challenging. They wouldn't review every one, right? And hit the ground. Correct call. Well, pretty good adjustment, though, nonetheless. Took forever for them to make the call, but it was the right one. Yeah, they got it right, though. Since it's rushing. Well, maybe, Tom, you see his right hand get underneath that? I mean, it's, it's worthy of another look. Coach Rodriguez is contemplating the challenge, I think. They are looking at it, of course, in the replay booth. Yeah. Well, it was just that last replay where I said maybe he got the right hand underneath it. I think it hit, I don't know, I think it, it does, but see his right hand? It did get underneath it, but I think yeah. not until the point the nose of the football had hit the turf. Well, remember, it has to be indisputable evidence to overturn it. It doesn't look like they're going to overturn that one. But. This is a Big East crew today. Michael Otolski and Robert Welsh are the replay officials. You know, and good teamwork by the officials. You know, you see the, the side judge was waiting for the back judge really to help him out. No, they didn't rush it. That's the referee, John McDade. After review, the play on the field is confirmed. The ball hit the ground before being controlled by the receiver. Okay. By that. Third down. It's not going to overturn those, are they? No, and I think it's correct. I yeah. think the nose of the football did hit. It's one of those things, had they called it a catch, they probably wouldn't have overturned that either. A big third down again for Stephen Threat. Third down and eight. Five wide receivers. Screen pass. Well, it's hard to get eight yards on that, isn't it, Tom? And defended by Maurice Crum. Yeah, Maurice Crum really making some things happen from the middle of the middle of the linebacker, kind of roaming that middle, read it perfectly, saw the screen well. You, you can tell he spent the week in the film room, <laughs> yeah, can't you? He was on the receiver, McGuffey, before the, anybody could block him. Yeah. It looks like Coach Rod is thinking about going for it on fourth and six. They're going to call timeout to think about it. Timeout Michigan facing a fourth down and six from the Notre Dame 37 yard line, trailing the Irish by 14. Fourth down and six, and it appears Michigan will go for it at the Notre Dame 37 yard line. With his defense, I punt it, play good defense. Stephen Threat steps up. His pass down the sideline and incomplete intended for Odoms. You see, Rich, that, that is not a high percentage pass on fourth and sixth time, right? I mean, I just, to me, the strength of your team is your defense, your front seven. You put them in terrible field position already, but it play great defense. And they had a little what they call a wheel route, kind of an out and up to Martavius Odoms, but he just wasn't open. And he's saying, hey, you got you to gotta throw it accurately. So the Irish take over on downs. They have put it into play at their own 37, already up 14. Just over five minutes remaining in the first quarter of play. Two Michigan turnovers leading to two Irish scores. Clawson, play action fake. Going big on first down for Floyd. And the freshman has it batted away. Great defensive play. Now a late flag. What a late flag comes yeah. down. That, that is. A really late flag by the field judge. I thought Donovan Warren had him covered pretty well. This is the play I think they wanted to open the game with. Pass interference. Defense. 15-yard penalty. 
Automatic first down. Charlie wanted to open the, open the game with a long pass to one of his wide receivers, Michael Floyd. You be the judge. I think that's a good defensive play, Tom. Might have raked his arm a little bit, but a tough call. Works the ball away in that shot, Donovan Warren. But you know, the, the official right on top of the play didn't, didn't call it. Yeah. Everything going against the Wolverines early. Here's James Aldrich now in the Notre Dame backfield for the first time this season. A junior from St. Louis. First down after the interference penalty. Fake it. Fawson going to go downfield again. Deep for Tate. Hold it, Tate. Reception of the season. Jimmy Clausen twice aired it out downfield, got the interference call, and then got the touchdown. Walker's extra point attempt is good. Coach Weiss said, score early. He did. And off. Golden Tate right down here at the bottom of the screen. It looks like a little slant and go. Starts with good protection. There's the slant. The safety comes up, and he just splits the cone coverage. And then a perfect throw by Boss. There. Charlie Weiss has found out that he's got some deep threats that he didn't really have a year ago because Golden Tate, while he was here, he's just really becoming a wide receiver. And Michael Floyd and the offensive line, so criticized so often last year, giving up the 58 sacks. Terrific protection. Gaping up top. Eric Olsen, Wanger, Stewart, uh, Robinson, a whole bunch of guys making their way and giving Jimmy Clausen plenty of time to find a streaking golden tape. And what about Mike Haywood's play call? Yeah, how about that? Second game uh, of Mike Haywood's play calling, but, you know, you, you sensed they felt they could hit some deep balls when we talked to Charlie Weiss yesterday. And, you know, we saw a picture of Rich Rodriguez a few moments ago, Tom. He looks shocked. Yeah. Last time Notre Dame scored three touchdowns in a first quarter was in September 2004 against Washington. Here's Harrison returning the Burkhardt kick. And again, failing to get too much, he does cross the 25-yard line. Let's check in with Alex Flanagan. Hey, Tom and Pat, well, the energy down on the field is absolutely electric, kind of what you would expect out of this storied rivalry. The Notre Dame sideline is confident and has a casualness that I have never seen out of this team before. And after that last third, that touchdown pass that Jimmy Clausen threw, you could just see him almost become a leader in that moment as he went over and started high-fiving and hugging his players. Pat and Tom? All right, Alex. And one of the things Coach Weiss was looking for from his team was more emotion. Didn't see much of it the first three quarters last week. But you did in the fourth quarter when they pulled the game out, and here you are. Direct snap and this is Carlos Brown who yeah. takes the direct snap. And Notre Dame was ready for it. Maurice Crumb, again, spent some time in the film yeah. room, and he was ready for it. In fact, Coach Weiss said, we expect this early in the week. Absolutely. This was not a surprise. Maurice Crumb right here in the middle of your screen. And again, uh, Carlos Brown played some high school quarterback. Charlie was talking about it in his press conference early this week. But hey, Maurice Crum comes ready every week, right? He doesn't necessarily play great every week, but you know one thing about Maurice Crum, he's going to be prepared. And he's going to be a leader on the field. Second down and 10. Three pass is deflected and knocked down by Brian Smith. Now some of these guys look like the 1988 championship team for the Waltz. I mean, they got some athletic guys out there, and Brian Smith is one of those, forcing another third and long for the Wolverines. The blitz up the middle by Crum, and then the other linebacker, only playing two linebackers. One blitzed, one dropped back in coverage. Both had an effect on the play. Third down and 10 from the Wolverine 25.
Street hit as he delivered it. Oh, Diving pass. attempt made, and it's good by Greg Matthews. Matthews able to pick it off the turf for a key third down conversion. Street hit him for 16. You know, if you say just 16 yards, but I'll tell you, this was magical because Street had somebody in his face, and then Greg Matthews, whom they wanted, become their go-to guy. Yeah, got his arm underneath it. Terrific catch by Greg Matthews. Being now, covered by the freshman Robert Blanton on the play. And a very important play there for the Wolverines. Minor, Brandon Minor. Broke a tackle for the moment, reaches midfield about a yard short of the first down. Nine-yard gain. Maurice Crum at him by the shoe top. Talking to Calvin McGee, the offensive coordinator, about Brandon Miner this week, and he was saying, oh, even though he got just one carry last week, it was for 15 yards and a touchdown, but he said he's our best blocker in the backfield, picking up the blitz. And with John Tenuta's defense at Notre Dame now, they blitz 75% of the time. Miner with uh, 623 yards in his career coming into the day. Swing past him, Odoms, and Odoms will be wrestled down by David Bruton after picking up another Michigan first down. And the Michigan offense starting to click a little bit now. Yeah, no, that's kind of a, it's kind of a triple option, really. He can, he can run it, the quarterback can run it, or he can throw that little bubble screen to Odoms. And that's that's a nice read by Stephen Freed, and that's what they're asking from their slot back. There's Calvin McGee, the. Great Southern tight end, Southern University, and their offensive coordinator now. Popcorn box next to it. Yeah, probably didn't yeah. taste so good right about now. <laughs> you always notice the food, don't you, Tom? <laughs> you always seem to notice the food. 36-yard line blitz. And it blows up the play. David Bruton. David Bruton came on a safety blitz. Brandon Miner barely got the handoff from three before he was hit by Bruton. How many, how many tackles do you think Bruton has already? Half, half dozen, I'd say. More than that, seven. Wow. Gets it on special team. Remember, he started this game on special teams, getting down there, creating some havoc uh, on special teams. Good blitzer, good tackler, good cover guy. Their best player on defense is number 27, David Bruton. Loss of four on that last play. Screen pass to McGuffey. Gets a couple of blocks. Now a cutback, and he's got blockers in front. Bounces off his own man. McGuffey for the touchdown. Green pass to Sam McGuffey. Okay, you know, good drive for the Wolverines to come back. Nothing real fancy except good downfield blocking and then great vision by the YouTube wonder Sam McGuffey. Freshman out of Texas. Everybody said he is our home run hitter, and you saw some of that right there. First receiving touchdown in his career. He has scored a rushing touchdown. Boy, did the Wolverines need a lift, and Absolutely. a freshman gave it to him. Absolutely. Lopata will attempt the extra point. And KC puts it through the uprights. So a sigh of relief for Rich Rodriguez and the Wolverine fans as they finally get their offense moving. And McGuffey with a 40-yard reception from Threat for the Michigan score. Okay, he's down. Let's see, there's McGuffey. Oh, there you go. Okay. Man in motion. McGuffey. And watch the blocks downfield. One, two, and he picks up one on the other side, bounces off his own guy, you know, own guy, and weaves his way into the end zone. So some good early blocks, and then the last 25, 30 yards is all Sam McGuffey. I think that was Perry Dorstein that <laughs> deflected him a little bit. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier that he had uh, such a great career at Cypher High School. He's from Texas, and here's what's gotten him acclaim, though. Watch this move, high school. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, he Whoa, looks, hello. <laughs> looks like uh, De'Ron Robles, the uh, Olympic hurdler. And watch this. This is even more amazing. It's amazing. Well, I think Fielding Yost would think about that. <laughs> he could play he for Fielding Yost. Team, yeah, yeah. Right. He could play for Fielding Yost. <laughs> oh, that YouTube site, he got what, 2 million visits over the last few months. That's what he did in high school. Look at that. Nearly 6,000 yards and 83 touchdowns. Brian Wright will kick off for Michigan after the Wolverines get on the scoreboard just under two minutes. And the Wolverines need a special teams play just like Notre Dame's had a couple of them. Tate and Allen are deep as the kick is squibbed. Tough hop picked up by Golden Tate. Tate has to move up the middle. Caught and knocked down after the 
return. It was Troy Wolfolk on special teams for the Wolverines. Well, Golden Tate was saying to us yesterday when we talked to him, every Friday night, he goes to YouTube and types in Rocket Ismail's kickoff returns. And he's been doing this for two years. And he watches Rocket's kickoff returns. Remember, Rocket returned two of them against Michigan for touchdowns a number of years ago. And that kind of sets the stage for him the next day. He paid special attention to those this week. Yeah. Those Michigan returns by the Rocket. Clawson setting up a screen. Whoa, a lot of traffic in there and able to catch it was Robert Hughes, but nothing doing. Michigan all over it. And by the way, <laughs> we haven't had our Adidas starting lineup for the Irish. We've seen a lot of these guys already in and out of there. Floyd after a great start in his career. Offensive lineman so much maligned over the past two seasons, but doing a pretty good job here with Trevor Robinson yeah. getting the start today with Chris Stewart injured. Two, two true freshmen, Michael Floyd and the right guard Trevor Robinson starting for Charlie Weiss today. Gateman in motion. Second down and long. Carson delivers to Tate. Tumble. 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 And he just scooped it back up. That's twice the should, Irish have fumbled in the should be a shortstop with hands like that. He's a center fielder <laughs> on the baseball team, but not a shortstop. Remember, Jimmy Clausen fumbled earlier and recovered it. Golden Tate dropped this one. It's tackled by Warren. And he heads up Golden Tate, picks that one up. Second good bounce to Golden Tate. He had one on the kickoff. And then one right there. Brendan Harrison kind of kicked it back to him, or the Wolverines might have had him. Third down and five. Boston going deep down the sideline. Michael Floyd intercepted. intercepted by Morgan Trent of Michigan. You know, I don't think that's necessarily a bad decision by Jimmy Clausen to give the receiver a, a chance, but sometimes the defenders are just better than you are, right, on that particular play. And Morgan Trent, who's had a really nice career for the Wolverines on Michael Floyd, the freshman, and that, that's just as good as you can do it, Tom. Yep. Got his head turned around. Maybe, you know, Clausen throws it a little bit more down the field, but perfect cover, almost maybe offensive interference, yep. but great play by Morgan Trent. Trent, the fifth-year senior from San Diego and his... 25th straight start, perfect coverage, and he picks it off. And the momentum now starting yeah. to swing in favor of Michigan with 14 seconds left in the opening quarter. See if Michigan's offense can take advantage of the turnover as Notre Dame's did on two occasions. McGuffey. McGuffey with some room, using his blockers. He's down the sideline. Bruton to beat, and Bruton knocks him out of bounds. What a nice block he got from his fullback, Kevin Grady. Oh, There's McGuffey. a late flag on this one, too. A late flag after the 28-yard gallop by Sam McGuffey. It's amazing to me, Tom. You know, Sam McGuffey came in as, as a freshman. But First they, foul, under necessary roughness, number 95 defense. Well, then, he wins. First there was half. a lot of veteran offensive backs at Michigan, and yet the moment Sam McG uh, McGuffey came in, they said, hey, he's our guy because he's a home run hitter. Some good blocking in the offensive line by Dorstein and, as I said, Kevin Grady. Well, that, that, that didn't look like a late hit to me, but did you think that time? It's not there. Well, they didn't call it on Bruton. They called it to... There it was. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah that's right. I called it Ian uh, Williams. Ian Williams, right. yeah, yeah, there's. Exactly. Yeah, the end of the first quarter. And Michigan <laughs> has regathered themselves after finding themselves down big early. They are coming back and they've recaptured the momentum at the end of the first quarter. 21 7 Irish will return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. Notre Dame football presented by Coke Zero. Commencing pre flight fuel at NBCSports.com. Boy, was Tim Brown a great player here? Oh my goodness, last Heisman Trophy winner. Michigan dominating the first quarter statistically, but two early Michigan fumbles, leading to two oh. Notre Dame touchdowns. And here's That's a loss. Odom's loss on the play. 
You know, you, that was ugly. Yeah, you, you know, you got to take some shots downfield. They've taken one to be able to set up those bubble screens. And I tell you, the corner, I, I couldn't say, I think it was Rayshon McNeil came off the top. No, it was Lambert, right? It was Lambert. Yeah, Lambert. Terrell Lambert just fought off his block. Stayed after that him, play lost up. his helmet. And and there's helped. Maurice Crum. And Brian Smith was there, too. And only playing two linebackers inside, but boy, those two guys are playing well. Second down, 19. Freed has gone all the way at quarterback. He hands to McGuffey, and McGuffey breaks free again. <laughs> he's kind of a fun guy to watch, isn't he? McNeil forces him out of bounds. Another, he's closing in on 100 yards here in the first half. Uh, got 40 yards through the air. You know what, Tom, it surprises me how strong a runner he is. You know, as I said, he's only 185 pounds, but he breaks a lot of tackles. He's been at 100 all-purpose yards here in the first quarter of play, and he's set up a third and nine for his Wolverines. Niners in the game now, along with McGuffey. Three pumps one way, looks the other way, then scrambles free. Stephen Threet hit and grown out of bounds just short of the five-yard line by David Bruton. A 23-yard scramble by Threet for the Michigan first down. Tom, so much of playing quarterback is making good decisions, and Stephen Threet made the right decision. The double coverage, you see the, the Red Sea party there, right? And Stephen Threet, who doesn't remind, you know, you know, Pat White, but still got an awful lot out of that play. But it started with a great decision by Stephen Threet. Reed started one game for the Wolverines. Nick Sheridan started the other, but it's been three all the way, and he got him a big conversion there. Looks to the sideline where the play has changed. The Wolverines trying to take advantage of the Irish turnover, the interception. Three handoff, McGuffey. McGuffey met and driven back. Not this time, my friend, says Ian Williams. Nose tackle. Well, this is his hobbies, by the way, Ian Williams is. One of his hobbies is napping. Wow. Nap what's sleeping. Wrong, what's napping. wrong with that? Well, as long as you don't do it in defensive line meetings, you can nap anytime you want, the coaches say, but not during meeting time. Sam McGuffey, look at that. 67 yards just into the second quarter. Fake, and then... Three rolling off his back foot. Dangerous throw. Got away with it. That is a dangerous throw. Tended for Butler, the tight end. Well, Justin Brown has had a nice first half, I think, for the Irish, number 94. Once again, gives some pressure. A little play action fake. He didn't, didn't fool Scott Smith, number 41. You know, if he could have gotten his feet underneath him, he might have had a, you know, a touchdown. But Scott Smith put a lot of pressure on him. He just threw it up for grabs. Luckily for Steven, it fell incomplete. Setting up a third down at the six. Third and goal, six yard line, three. Pass is complete to Babb. Zion Babb with his first reception of the season, but Rayshon McNeil wrapped him up immediately. You know, you know, Tom, it's just hard to get that ball in the end zone. You're, you're just, when it's third and eight, you're saying, hey, my guy is going to break a tackle. But this Irish defense, as we saw last week, particularly the defensive backs, we saw from Kyle McCarthy last week, and then Rayshon McNeil right there. So KC Lapata will attempt uh, the field goal. He's hit two of three this season. This will be a 23-yarder. Lapata's boot is dead center. So Michigan gets the turnover on the interception, converted into three points. It's 21-10. Notre Dame football is brought to you by your local authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer by G2, the new low-calorie hydrator from Gatorade, by Michelin, a better way forward, and by Warner Brothers' new motion picture, Body of Lies, in theaters everywhere, Friday, October 10th. 21-10, Notre Dame's lead over Michigan early in the second quarter. Jimmy Clausen about to take the field again. Half of his completions thus far have been for touchdowns. What percentage is that? About 50. 53 maybe in Kentucky. 
Here's Brian Wright ready to kick off to Golden Tate and Armando Allen. Allen fields it, and then his momentum carries him out of bounds at the 14-yard line. So Notre Dame backed up here. Well, you know that uh, Coach Charlie Weiss was saying he didn't talk about the first three quarters where they sputtered against San Diego Tate on the state, only on the fourth quarter where they played well to pull the game out. He was hoping that play in the fourth quarter, that momentum, would carry over to today's game. And here's what they did in the first quarter. Three touchdowns, and the defense had two fumble recoveries, so uh, he wanted to build on that fourth quarter, and indeed they did in the first. But now, though, you see the momentum edging toward the Wolverines a little bit. As Notre Dame is backed up from the 13, Armando Allen, short game. Armando Allen last week really kind of emerged as that all-purpose guy. You know, nice game in three different phases. Uh, special teams returns in his receiver, 158 total yards for Armando. He did lead the team in all-purpose yards last season. Yeah, over, over a thousand. Too many of those were on kickoff returns. Though, right? They don't want that. Second down and eight. Two speedy receivers on the outside, and then David Grimes, their slot receiver. Michigan showing blitz. Clawson with the team who shakes one man. Stealing that clock. Tripping up a little bit, but couldn't get him down. And finally caught the 25 yard line. Golden Tate. <laughs> well, the transition to wide receiver is over. High school running back. And they were expecting or hoping for plays last year like this from Golden Tate, but he was much more limited, right, Tom, than he is this year's a wide receiver. The whole package is there. This one for 60 yards, most of it after the catch. Yeah, good blitz pickup by Armando Allen allowed Jimmy Clawson to find him. But look how strong he is, too. Told us yesterday in, in high school, ran at 10.800 meters, best time. And that's a, a family name, Golden, as he has uh, three receptions over 100 yards. Here's a screen pass to Floyd, Michael Floyd. Just short of the 15-yard line on the pass from Clawson, knocked out by Morgan Trent. Well, you know, Charlie Weiss always says hey, he's had the most approval between game one and game two. This looks like a completely different Irish team than we saw against the Aztecs of San Diego State last week. And I would say, Tom, in all three phases. Absolutely. Uh, the offense. Clicking. The defense played pretty well last week. The offense looks like a completely different unit. Second and one. Aldridge is the tailback, gets the handoff, and has the first down. James Aldridge getting the carry to the 10 yard line. You mentioned he didn't, didn't play last week. We just saw Allen and Robert Hughes, but James Aldridge is the third piece of that terrific block by Asaf Schwab, the fullback. He's a big, powerful guy, 225 pounds, and they'll find a role for James Aldridge. In today's college game, you need more than one go-to guy. Aldridge actually the top rusher for the Irish last year, 463 yards, and the number two rusher back in 06. Oh, they didn't get in the end zone last year. Here he is, tripped up, just short of the end zone. Mark it at the one-yard line, Morgan Trent upended him before he could reach the end zone. Well, you got a nifty guy in Armando Allen, a versatile guy in Robert Hughes, and then you got a pounder in James Aldridge. Aldridge doing the work and now goes out as Hughes comes in to replace him. Three tight ends, Rudolph, Yateman, and Schmidt swap the fullback. Fake to Hughes. Clawson throws it up for grabs. It's got to be passing a field, field. And there's the fag is down in the end zone. Yeah, Rudolph pushed. was the intended receiver. Yeah, he, he, he pushed so the defensive back pushed off. That was Donovan Warren. But he's either got to take that sack or throw it into the stands. Chance. You're right. Pass interference. Number six, defense. Yeah, Donovan Ball Warren, that's, the -yard line. that was really kind of an easy call, first Tom. Down. It was an easy call. He yeah. just gave him a uh, two-handed push and knocked him about three yards. Caught the ball, but was out of bounds anyway. So Donovan Warren whistled for the interference call in the end zone. Half the distance penalty 
First and goal inside the one. Hughes burrowing under the Wolverines. Still looking. Still no signal. Now they signal touchdown Irish. Robert Hughes with another touchdown run. What a guy Robert Hughes just he lit up the room when he came in and talked to us yesterday. Smile, yeah, this young just, man just an infectious smile and awfully good player as well. He said he's pretty versatile. Big guy, 237 pounds, but nifty too. Give James Aldridge some credit though. Yeah. He got him down to that point. Then the interference call in the end zone, and then Hughes with the score. Now Brandon Walker with the extra point attempt. And he puts it through. Robert Hughes with another touchdown at the end of the Notre Dame drive. 28-10. Come on, Jake. Look him up. Here's our Coke Zero scoring drive. Robert Hughes scored on that six-play, 87-yard drive. The big play was the 60-yard pass from Clawson to Tate, and it's 28-10. Somebody said that the defenses would predominate in this game. I'm not naming yeah. any names, but somebody <laughs> said that at the start of the game. Thanks, Paul. Short kick will go out of bounds. Ball goes out of bounds on the kick. The last drive, the, the Irish Thomas, is we you've always told me the little things lead to big things. Watch the blitz pickup by Armando Allen. And what does that do? That allows Jimmy Clausen to get this pass off and then allow Golden Tate to do his thing, which is a big thing. 60 Strong, yard thing. Yeah. Powerful run by Golden Tate. And then the pass interference penalty. Gave them the first and goal, and uh, guess who finished it off? The smiling Robert Hughes. At least he was smiling with us yesterday, <laughs> but determined run there by Robert Hughes to get the ball in the end zone. A lot more emotion and enthusiasm on the sideline this week than we saw last. But the kickoff goes out of bounds, so Michigan puts it in play at its own 40-yard line. Stephen Threat still the quarterback. He's in the shotgun. Four wide receivers, pumped one way. Now goes down the sideline and a diving catch made by Stoneham. Nice catch by Daryl Stoneham. It goes for 20 yards. That was a tight throw by three. And he just kind of weaved it right in that, you know, that cover two, back of the corner, front of the safety. And that is not a guy who was wide open, but Stephen Three with a big arm. You know, he's 6'6, 230 pounds. From Adrian High School in Adrian, Michigan, about 45 minutes from Ann Arbor. Three. Muscling that one out into the flat. Caught by Odoms and tackled by the shoe tops well, by Steve, Blanton. You mentioned Adrian High School, but you know who their valedictorian was, right? Yeah, it was uh, Stephen. Stephen Three, valedictorian at uh, Adrian High School, then actually went to a little move here by Montavious Odoms. Went to Georgia Tech. Things didn't work out there. Transferred to Michigan. The coaches uh, that had recruited him left, and so. His mom, Pam, had attended the University of Michigan, so here's a nice run by McGuffey. He showed us several nice runs today. That one covers seven yards. Well, Freed was saying to us uh, this week that this is not the first time he's been to Notre Dame Stadium. You see his GPA and such, very, very good student, remains one. But uh, his parents were season ticket holders, brought him as a kid to a couple of Notre Dame Michigan games here. He's rushed 12 times for 75 yards has McGuffin who carried that last one. And here he is again. Actually that's Grady. Kevin Grady driven back and stood him up at the line of scrimmage and drove him backwards. Maybe forward progress give him a yard or two. Darius Fleming freshman from Chicago getting the play and getting in on a tackle. And our yellow first down line today brought to you by Xerox. Early big game last week we talked about him is Sergio Oops, Sergio Brown. Sergio Brown. There he is. He's going. He's up there at the top. Blitz is blitzed about oh, six or seven times so far today. He's playing the slot receiver in the top of the screen. Breach pass on target. Complete to Stoneham again. And Stoneham becoming an expert at going down off the turf to make those receptions. Got that one. Hey, one thing Calvin McGee said to us this week, he's the offensive coordinator, 
we've talked about 22, Daryl Stone. And he said, this guy is really fast. And, you know, they had some fast guys at West yeah. Virginia. He said, he's got to be a big play threat for us down the field. This one from Stafford, Texas. The face mask. McGee and McGuffey. And the penalty, penalty will be on Brian Smith for the face mask. You get the feeling that Sam McGuffey could play in any offense, right? I know this is the spread. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 58 defense. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. They'll call that on Brian Smith, but uh, Sam McGuffey has really found his way. And there's the easy call. Matt Coons is uh, out of the game for the Irish. And Ian Williams back in his place. And also Ethan Johnson, the freshman from Portland, Oregon. Nauseous on the sideline, we're told, so he's over there on the Irish fence. First and goal at the eight. McGuffey. McGuffey. Didn't get a good block there, and Brian Smith able to collapse him short of the five yard line. Yeah, one thing is, we watch Sam McGuffey. Boy, he's got some good vision. Man, good lead block there by Kevin Grady. Otherwise, it would have been a, even more significant. Pat Coons on the sideline and made a couple of real nice plays in the first half with a uh, interesting haircut. Want to try that, Tom, sometime? How do you know I haven't in the past? <laughs> you may have, yeah. Second and goal from the seven. Blitz from the Irish. The handoff is to Grady, oh, and the big man oh. pounds his way into the end zone for the Michigan touchdown. Kevin Grady. Well, Calvin McGee, the offensive coordinator, said to us, Kevin Grady is our most physical back. Would you disagree? Dare to disagree, Tom, with that run? Not at all, as he uh, carries tacklers with him seven yards. You know, and, and he's made a couple of really nice blocks in the first half. I mean, and the guy he's carrying, Brian Smith, is 245 pounds. That is a strong, powerful run by Kevin Grady. Lapata for the extra point. What a fun game. And yeah. it's good. I guess the rest of the defense court. Yeah, those, those defenses certainly are the best part of these two teams. <laughs> Somebody Just said that. Let it that. go, Tom. Let it go. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Chase Freedom, introducing rewards points you can use like cash. Visit chase.com slash freedom. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Alex Flanagan. So far, the rain holding off at Notre Dame Stadium. And it's become a shootout. 28-17 with 5.41 left in the second quarter. Notre Dame leads Michigan. Ryan Wright will kick off for the Wolverines. You're looking at Golden Tate for the deep man, along with Armando Allen. Short kick, another hop taken by Tate. And up ended at the 25-yard line as we check in with Alex. Hey, Tom, you got to imagine that Charlie Weiss is happy with his offensive performance in the first half so far. He, I have not seen him smile yet, but did you see him fire up his team, telling them or reminding them, rather, that this is a 60-minute game, telling them to go wire to wire, Tom. Well, it makes sense because we've seen uh, Michigan come up off the mat yeah. to make it a game here, 28-17. Yeah, and they've scored twice with great field position, right? Michigan, for the most part, has had to earn their 17 points. First down, eye formation shown by the Irish. Aldrich is the tailback. And he gets the handoff. And he's out to the 29-yard line. As we check our Notre Dame ticker, presented by Coke Zero. Let's see what the scores. What about Maryland? Lost to Middle Tennessee. Now they beat Cal. Yeah, Cal was a pretty good football team, too. Surprising. Missouri's a good fit team yes, as well. Nevada comes in here to South Bend next year. Pac-10 taking a few lumps. Yeah. Think we're going to see them later in the year as East well. East Carolina, Skip Holtz, his team tied. Was, and uh, look at Georgia trailing South Carolina. And Purdue's beating Oregon. Crossing the 30-yard line, Aldridge. Tackled by John Thompson. It's going to bring up a third down in about four with five minutes left in this first half. Yeah, this is, you know, you kind of feel this thing going either way, right? Jimmy Clausen, now's the time for Jimmy to kind of find his way to pick up those uh, four or five yards to get that first. You know, he's got you know, Golden Tate and Michael Floyd outside. 
These are the kind of downs that David Grimes in the slot. You know, these are generally the slot receivers kinds of downs. Grimes with some back injuries in practice this week. Didn't practice on Thursday. Makes that catch, though. But did not make the first down. Driven back. Good defense for the Wolverines, led by Morgan Trenton, Brandon Harrison. Great tackle by Brandon Harrison, who's played very, very well this season. Charlie, remember, he went for it a lot last year on fourth down, contemplating it again. He's going to be less than a yard short of the first down marker. The receiver's got to get it. The receiver's got to get past the first down markers. You know, on third and four, you got to, You can't run a two-yard route. And Eric Most is on to punt for the first time today. Warren is deep for the Wolverines. Two gunners from Notre Dame have had a big year thus far. Most didn't hit it. Makes a good Irish bounce, however. Bruton will watch it and down it at about the 23-yard line. So three right back on the field for the Wolverines, trailing 28-17. Notre Dame Stadium and on the uh, Irish sideline Charlie Weiss has had a support put on his leg just being helped to his feet he was rolled over on that last play it's a headset back on but here's what happened there's no watch number 90 in blue John Ryan left of the screen will appear and coach Weiss and coach Weiss is right there looking the other way yeah Oof. Ouch. Ouch. Joe Paterno got run over a couple of years yeah. ago. Remember, had a right. spent some time in the press box call goes. But right. Charlie's going to stay right down there on the sideline. So he stays on the sideline as Michigan puts it into play from the Wolverine 26-yard line. McGuffey using his blockers. Cuts back. McGuffey <laughs> evading another tackle and finally <laughs> taken down at the first yard down marker McGuffey. by McCarthy and Bruton. And looks like he got enough for the first down right at that yellow line. It's not Easter, but he runs like a little bit like a bunny rabbit, doesn't That's he? Gotta He's got to hops around, he race tackles. He, you know, elusive and, and surprisingly and deceptively strong. 28 yards today, and we have three minutes left to go in the first half. Two most winningest teams in college football locked up here, Michigan and Notre Dame. The two best bands, the two best fight songs. You can go on and on. A pretty good game as McGuffey tried to come back that time and was stopped as he tried to cut it back by Koontz, who's back in the game. Well, one reason for Justin Brown got a piece of the tackle too, as Coach Weiss could yeah, get some support, support from support, his yeah. assistant coaches. Got a brace on his left leg. It is. But, yeah, you'd be perfectly honest. I'm surprised it doesn't happen oh. more often. All yeah. those plays on the sideline. Second down and ten. Three lost it and falls on it. What happened to him last week? We were watching yeah. tape yesterday, right? <laughs> Same thing happened to Stephen Three last week and lost the handle. And it's raining just yet, but it just came right out of his hands. Darius Fleming, the freshman linebacker, couldn't get it. And we're going to bring a cart for Coach Weiss. It's third down and 18. Michigan has converted three of six third downs to three successful ones. Third and 11, third and 10, and third and nine. So they're used to this third and long situation. This one the longest of them all. And three wings it down the sideline, and it is incomplete. Tended for Matthews, who was covered by McNeil. Good coverage by McNeil. Pass is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, really good coverage by Rayshon McNeil. Rayshon McNeil gets his second start because of the absence of Darren Walls, who left the program, at least temporarily. But Rayshon McNeil, really getting his first opportunity as a starter, makes a terrific play. And Matthews grabbed his face mask there at the end of it. Here's Mesco on to punt for the first time for Michigan. Remember, he lined up in punt formation earlier, but it was a fake, and he picked up a first down. Hunt will bounce in front of oh West, and he lets it roll down inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. A 58-yard punt with no return. So Jimmy Clausen will come back out and 
Coming up at halftime, the Mercedes-Benz Notre Dame Halftime Show. Jimmy Roberts and Peter King in the New York studio with the scores and highlights from college football's top 25. Bob Costas will sit down with NFL Hall of Famer Jim Brown to discuss the upcoming movie, The Express, based on the life of running back Ernie Davis. And Peter will have the latest news from around the NFL. It's all coming up on the Mercedes-Benz Notre Dame Halftime Show. Which Weiss has the crutches now. From the 14-yard line. Hughes, oh, oh. big hole. Gets a block downfield. And Robert Hughes crosses the 30. Goes out of bounds after a gain of 18 yards and a late flag comes down. Big blocks by Chris Stewart and Sam Young on the right side time. Boy, tremendous hole for Robert Hughes. The last week, he didn't get a lot of production out of the uh, run game. Good block by Yateman, too. The tight end just kind of pushes his guy, but 74 young. Chris Stewart, number 59, doing their thing on the right side. Yeah, Yateman just cleared his man out to create that huge hole. Camara, too, downfield blocking well. And then that then last Yateman. little shove draws a foul. It's uh, on Morgan Trent. Uh, giving the Irish really some great field position with 134 left, too, right? Yep, personal foul call puts the ball out to the 47 yard line of the Irish. Clawson in the shotgun. Allen in the backfield with him. Clawson quick toss behind Yateman and incomplete as we check in uh, on the weather now with Alex. Hey, Tom, well, rain certainly starting to come down here. Not hard, just kind of sprinkling. But both of these teams did practice in anticipation of the rain. They both practiced with wet balls this week, Tom. All right, and Coach uh, Weiss telling us that the wind is what disturbed him. Well, there's a look at the uh, Doppler radar. And it is stayed to the north of us so far all day, but getting closer as you see and starting to encompass the South. Did you ever do local weather? I did. Good with the Doppler. Was a good yeah. weatherman. I bet. It's a Doppler. Quick toss. Floyd. Good tackle. Freshman can't get away. That was a sure tackle by Trent. Well, you watch enough tape of Michigan defense, particularly Morgan Trent. He is has been a very good tackler his entire career with the Wolverines. Freshman All-American a number of years ago and played well for the last three. Only a one-yard gain as we come to the one-minute mark. Third down and nine. Tate's been a big guy a lot so far today up at the top of the screen. The other freshman down at the bottom, Michael Floyd. Two deep threats, but they need only nine to keep the sticks going. They're going to go deep for Floyd. Pushing and shoving and incomplete. There's a penalty marker down. I thought that Floyd yeah. might have been the one yeah, that pushed I, off. I think if they're going to call it, they're going to call it on Floyd. This is number three. Awesome. Yeah, I think the officials doing a nice job downfield on some of these calls, Tom, yep. right? That was on Floyd. Offensive pass interference. Boy, an aggressive play calling game. First half by Mike Hay with a new play caller for Notre Dame. You know, they had a plan and they are sticking to it. And you know, I think too, before the weather really gets dour, which it may, getting those, you know, your chances, your big shots in early is important. Weather can get dour? Well, I think so. Penalty declined. With 42 seconds left in the first half. And Mossed to punt for the second time. Donovan Warren deep for the Wolverines, standing at his own 10. Better punt from Mossed this time. And Warren can't get him down. Bruton hopped on his back, then gets some help, and they finally get him down. And 30 seconds left in the half. Stay tuned for the Mercedes-Benz Notre Dame halftime show. You should hear Bob Costas talk with the great Jim Brown about another Syracuse running back, Ernie Davis. Part of the movie, The Express, for the life of Ernie Davis. And the rain pelting Notre Dame Stadium now. We've been lucky so far. The rain was practically flooding this area this morning. Slacked off. The field was covered until about 12:30. So 
Yeah, the playing surface is good. I don't think Charlie, I think he's waved off the puck. He seems like he wants to walk it. Right? And that'll bring the first half to a close. And let's go down to Alex. I'm Charlie's asking me, I don't want to knock you over here if I'm going to ask about his athleticism, but seriously, what happened? Well, what happened is uh, one of my guys got run out of bounds onto the coach's area right there, and I was following the ball down the field because it was back behind me right there. There's nothing I could do, nothing they could do. I mean, you know. What's wh hurt? Uh, well, no, what's hurt is it's 28 to 17. <laughs> Let's get inside and see if we can get some work done here at, at halftime. Here. All right, we'll let you go All do right, that. Thanks. Thank you, Charlie. All right, Alex, he's a gamer. Boy. <laughs> Halftime here at Notre Dame Stadium. The Irish leading Michigan 28-17. Jimmy Roberts and Peter King in the New York studio. Halftime performances of the Notre Dame and Michigan bands at NBCSports.com. Now it's time for the Mercedes-Benz Notre Dame Halftime Show. For that, let's go to Jimmy Roberts. How about Charlie? All right, Lester, uh, some uh, tragic news today. But here at Notre Dame, the, the rain is pelting down, as you see, 28-17 as we start the third quarter. And uh, graphic evidence there of the rain. People brought their rain gear, of course. It held off for a while, but now coming down in earnest. And Alex will uh, update us in a moment on the condition of Charlie Weiss, who was injured in that first half, rolled over as he had his back to a play, left the field on crutches, and she'll update us here in a moment. But first, Michigan will kick off Brian Wright to get the second half underway with Allen and Tate deep for Notre Dame. I remember Tom Latop who said ball security when you get real bad weather, hang on to that ball. It'll be on the bounce, picked up by Tate. Tate, driven down and out of bounds at around the 30 yard line. And Alex, what about Coach Weiss? Well, the update's not good, uh, Tom and Pat. Charlie Weiss tore his ACL and his MCL ligaments when his player hit him there in the knee, although he seemed to be in pretty good spirits when I talked to him at the half. Meanwhile, Pat, Coach Rodriguez uh, kind of said exactly what you just said, that ball security in this rain will be key in the second half. You know, you can make up a deficit in weather like this with really good special teams. And again, for every punter, Tom, it's kind of weather I'd come after every punter try to block every punt. Well, in the first half, as Robert Hughes gets the carry, in the first half, the two teams in their first ten possessions did not have a punt and then punted the last three for each team. The, the, the protection on Jimmy Clausen, really for two weeks, have been terrific, right? This guy to hit twice this year, has not been sacked, so the offensive line that were really embarrassed after after uh, what happened last year, and including Michigan, who, who he was sacked eight times against Michigan, the offensive line has really responded in protecting their quarterback. It's in that 38 nothing pounding at the big house. Michigan has won two in a row in the series. Here's Aldridge almost breaking away, but not quite. Spun down by Stevie Brown, or he was going to have a nice gain on the play. So Brown holding on to get the tackle. First half stats, you see uh, Michigan with a pretty good rushing day. And, uh, Really, as you mentioned, has look at that time of possession. And that's way, way more than they have seen any time so far this season. But remember, it was two special teams errors by the Wolverines that really set up two very short drives by Notre Dame to get them up, you know, give them the two uh, their first two touchdowns. Coke zero halftime stats. Now it's third down and seven. Clawson in the shotgun. Chase from the pocket and throws it away. Okay, that's that's how you avoid sacks, right? You know, we were talking to Jimmy Clausen a couple weeks ago, and he said, you know, some of those sacks last year were my fault. I didn't really understand the protections, and uh, I was unsure of myself. But this is just a heads-up play. You know, throw it away, punt it, and play defense. And I was saying in this weather, though, if I were a coach, special teams coach, I'd go after the punter every time because you just don't know in this kind of weather what kind of snap you're going to get, whether the punter's going to bobble. There's Eric Moss in punt formation. Warren, the deep man for the Wolverines. Moss boots it. Got it away and a good one. Warren fumbling. loose. There's the ball security you mentioned. And the officials trying to see who has it. Alex. And it's probably changed hands two or three times in that big pileup. Alex Lanigan was just telling us that Rich Rodriguez at halftime, he said the number one thing this second half, ball security. Still waiting. Michigan football. 
Michigan got it back. Right through the old red basket. There's number 37, Mike Anello. Just assume Mike Anello is going to be down there first every time, right? And then I think it was, was it 29, Troy Wolfuck who made the recovery. Good, good hustle and strong play in the bottom of that pile by number 29, Wolfuck. So 51 yard putt and then fumbled but recovered by the Wolverines. They put it into play at their own 10. Stephen Threets went all the way quarterback. Hands to McGuffey. McGuffey working on a first class game today. Stopped by Justin Brown. First class is absolutely right. I mean, uh, he's done it in the running game, he's done it in the receiving game. He actually picked up a couple of blitzes as well in the first half. And uh, if, if the Wolverines are going to come back, that guy is going to feature very, very prominently for the, uh, for the Wolverines. Second down and seven. Blitz coming. And a run right where the blitz came from by McGuffey. Yeah, and what does that mean? Great read by Stephen Three. You know, he saw the blitz, and again, every run by the Michigan team is a read option. So he sees that blitz, does Stephen Three, and says, hey, I'm going to give it to my talented tailback, McGuffey. They're super back. That's the name of the position. He's played super this game. But, you know, he, this is an unusual offense, and every play as a quarterback you're graded, including on the runs, because you're making a read every run. Bruton came on the blitz that burned him. 17 carries, 104 yards now for McGuffey. Here he is again. Stop, start, pick up a good five yards. You know, McGuffey, as we watch him, is, is he's certainly good in the open field. We've seen that. But even in traffic, you see the way you kind of put both hands around that ball? Knows the kind of sloppy conditions that they're playing in, and uh, it's a heads up play by Sam McGuffey. Now, an official's timeout. Uh, Maurice Crum, a little shaken up. That would be bad news for the yeah, Irish. Yeah, they're one of their real leaders on defense. Captain, already graduated. Pain. His leg collapsing as he reaches the sideline. Replaced by Steve Quinn. Lower left of the screen right there. Looks like the wrong guy, number 40, though, excuse me. Number 40. Just gets caught up in the pile. Great. Hands off to Grady. Kevin Grady. Stop for a loss on the play. Good defense that time as the Notre Dame front got some penetration. Kerry Neal makes the tackle, help from Ethan Johnson. Ethan Johnson, we mentioned him earlier in the first half. Freshman from Portland, Oregon, and uh, you know, Charlie Weiss is really high on him and said, you know, if you have speed as a defensive lineman, you will play as a freshman. It's not as complicated as playing the offensive line or quarterback, but Ethan Johnson for the second week in a row playing. They're down in six on this. No huddle, spread offense. So plenty of time to look to the sideline to see if they want to change. They do not. Three looks right, goes left, dropped. Dropped by Greg Matthews. This uh, uh, kind of a very, very wet football. It came out of Stephen Three's hand kind of funny. And then as your receiver, you know, you ordinarily you catch these with your hands, right, Tom? But when it's like this, you try to use your body a little bit more, and that gives you a little bit more time for the defensive back to strip it. McNeil did strip it, and then three takes a hit. Well, he took, he took a hit, hit. just kind of locked up. He kind of wasn't hit. It just no. uh, looked like maybe slipped on that wet turf or something happened. George West and Armando Allen, two deep men for the Mesco punt. West takes it over his shoulder and goes nowhere. 50-yard punt with no return. Irish offense will come back out, clinging to a 28-17 lead. Coca-Cola Zero, real Coke taste and zero calories. By Allstate, proud sponsor of Notre Dame football. Are you in good hands? By Vonage. Call or go online now. And by Xerox Color, it makes business sense.
first ball at their own 18 yard line and a handoff to Robert Hughes. Stopped by John Thompson as Threat, Stephen Threat, the quarterback, kind of took a funny step after the last pass. We thought he was hit, but he saw the replay was not. So that means that uh, the backup quarterback, who's also started a game, Nick Sheridan, they actually are co-starters, I guess you could say, each starting one game coming into today. And we were told by the coaches we would see them both regardless. Twenty on Saturday afternoon to see twenty-year-olds with hard lines on the right? <laughs> Second down and 10, Clawson in the pocket. His pass is caught by Tate. That was pretty good coverage, but a good yeah. hands yeah. by Golden Tate. It covers 11 yards. That's an Irish first down. Donovan Warren had good coverage. Yeah, you're right. And you mentioned the strong hands. Remember that once he bobbled and fumbled, actually got the strong hands back a little bit earlier Donovan in the game. Warren this time, again, it's a wet football in the air, but he really gathered it with those two hands. Four receptions, 127 yards now for him. Two straight games, he's had a long touchdown catch. Remember the last year, the longest touchdown reception by a wide receiver from Notre Dame was only 25 yards. Golden Tate's beaten that in both weeks this year. Spot the ball at the 29. First down for the Irish. See some other scores go by. Here's Hughes. Hughes makes a nice run out of it. And mark him down. About the 36 yard line, it looks like. Good blocks on the left side that time. Mike Turkovich, number 77, the center, Dan Winger doing a great job. Michael Floyd. How about the play calling, though, by Mike Haywood? And, you know, Charlie Weiss, as we said last week, turned it over to the new offensive coordinator, Mike Haywood, and Mike has really called a good game. But more importantly, they set up a game plan during the week that they felt they could hit him with some long passes, and indeed they have. Second down and three. Again, it's Robert Hughes bouncing to the outside. Cutting up for the first down and has his feet cut out from under him at midfield by Morgan Trent. A gain of 13 yards, just shy of midfield. First down, Notre Dame. Robert Hughes with a big personality and an equally big body. And a big uh, stiff arm there yeah. on uh, Eze. You know, I, I said he looks like a in-shape Jerome Bettis. Remember I said that last night in the minute meeting? But you're very glad Jerome yeah. didn't hear that. Yeah, I know. But because he, he's a big guy but with those really light feet. Empty backfield here. We haven't seen this yet today. And shotgun for Clawson. There's the running back distribution today. Four wide receiver, five wide receiver formation, three to the top. Quick toss through the hands of Kyle Rudolph, the tight end. Right through the freshman's hand. And he's got some very large hands, too. Yeah. I mean, great high school basketball player and uh, It's hard on pass rushers, too, you know, in, the, in these wet conditions. Sure. So now second down and 10, and they line up in the I formation with Schropp the fullback and Hughes the tailback. Blitz comes from Michigan. Hand it to Hughes. Hughes cannot get outside that time. Dragged down for a loss by Brandon Graham. Graham and Jamison, they're two excellent defensive ends. We haven't heard much from them today. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Today's first down line brought to you by Xerox. You mentioned Brandon Graham, number 55 on defense. One of those two defensive ends last year against Notre Dame. He was in Jimmy Clausen's face, had three and a half sacks against Jimmy Clausen, but we haven't seen anywhere near Clausen this game. In the rain, Clausen facing now third down and 11. I'm willing to bet, you know, he grew up in Southern California. He has never played in weather like this. Bobby Paris comes in at wide receiver first time today. Clawson chased from the pocket. And he just throws it away onto the sideline, avoiding the sack the outside of the tackle box. He Michigan, was able to do that. Well, Michigan coaches believe it was intentional grounding, but that ball nearly got back to the line of scrimmage. That's what he needs to do, right? Yep, out, out of the tackle box. Throw just has to reach the line of scrimmage or... In that yeah. very close, right? Okay, we talk about ball, ball security. You worry if you're a head coach, you worry about center snaps, you worry about your punter catching the ball. And we worry about Warren, who fumbled the last punt. Yeah. He's still back there as Moss gets set to boot it his way. And I'm willing to bet you a Diet Coke that Mike Anello is down there making a tackle. Bounced it. Moss picked it up and sails it downfield. And it will hit in the end zone for the touchback. Well, the snap bounced to Moss, but he fielded it with sure hands. 
touchback from the 20 Wolverines when we come back. just getting stretched out on the sideline before he came in. At one point, an assistant came over to him, asked him if he was okay. He looked at him and said, I am fine. I am fine. Do not take me out. A friendly reminder that this uh, quarterback situation is still very much a competition here, Tom. All right, so Threat remains out there in the driving rain. There's Nick Sherrod in the backup. Second down and 11. Threat goes to the right to Matthew. Look right and then goes left to Matthews. Twisted to the turf by Steve Quinn. Quinn has come in to replace Maurice Crum. He's a 6'2, 225 pound senior from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Yeah, good ball security this time by Greg Matthews, and you see still Stephen Three yeah. kind of looking around. He's not right. And remember, this quarterback is required to run the ball some too. He certainly doesn't look like he's capable of running. Third down, and he's going deep. Three down the field, and it's caught by Odoms. He's down, he's down, but a big play for 33 yards. Hey, hey Tom, you know, under these conditions, I mean, it is really coming down. It is really, really. You got an injured knee or leg, and you're still hanging there in, in the face of a blitz, although we got good protection, and give your wide receiver Odoms a chance on a perfect throw against Sergio Brown, who was big last week for the Irish. That's pretty good. He ruled down, so it's spotted at the 39-yard line. First down for the Wolverines, who go back to McGuffey. And McGuffey breaks free. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Down awkwardly, Kyle McCarthy had a hold of him. He, he's Gumby. He bounces right back up, 14 yards. No, you or I did that. We would have oh. two pulled hamstrings and other things as well. But, but this guy is nimble. He is flag. He just keeps breaking check. He's out now, though. He's replaced by Kevin Grady. And Michael Shaw is in, too, in the backfield. Three changing the play. Still plenty of time on the play clock. Hand it off to Shaw. Four yards before Pat Coons takes him down. Michael Shaw wearing uh, Mike Hart's Mike Hart's old f uh, number from a year ago. And uh, the thing about Rich Rodriguez, he, he loses his the leading rusher of all time in Michigan uh, history, and their leading passer of all time in Henny, and uh, the number one draft pick in Jake Long. And he's still uh, marching up a pretty good effort here against Notre Dame. Freet back to Shaw. Hit once and then taken down. Ball coming up. Oh, just gonna, I think he was just, yeah, just a little second effort. Good. Michael Shaw stopped. The thing about Rich Rodriguez, he, it was a hey, change of offense. He was going to have to rebuild anyway. You know, they lose Jake Long, the number one draft pick. Chad Henney, their all-time leading passer. Manningham, one of the great receivers. And Mike Hart, the heart and soul of their team a year ago. McGuffey back on. Third down and six. Lines up, wings to the end zone, and flag down as Odoms was the intended receiver. You know, not a bad strategy in this kind of weather. You throw the ball up, and if your guy didn't get it, maybe get the pass interference. I mean, guys are pass slipping and sliding. Yeah, Stephen Freak has really managed this game well. And, uh, Charlie Weiss, who's got to be in a lot of pain. Yeah, that, that's an easy call. Underthrown deep ball. How many right. times do you see a, a pass interference? All, all the time. Right? It's the receiver comes back for it and collides with the defensive back, Sergio Brown in this case. Weiss continues to suffer on the sideline. More ways than one as the uh, Wolverines close in on the Irish here. Well, maybe Charlie's protege, Tom Brady, and he can kind of rehab oh, together. Huh? They've been texting each other all week since Brady was in here. First and goal now from the five yard line. First and goal, Wolverines. McGuffey. 
Nice play that time yeah. made by McCarthy. Kyle McCarthy driving him out of bounds. Yeah, really the hero of last week's game, Kyle McCarthy. 14 stops, 10 of them solo, and perhaps the defining moment early of the season, forcing a fumble down by the goal line. Remember that last week? He is just a sure tackler, is Kyle of, McCarthy. Came off a block to do yeah. that, too. That's what he did last week. Came off a block to make that stop of McGuffey. Second down and goal from the five. Great. Made the handoff. Can't get him down. Brady fumbled. Still loose. And the Irish have it. Brown falls on it. Sergio Brown recovers the fumble. In that case, Brady's extra effort trying to get the extra yards results in the Michigan turnover. You know, you just can't fault the effort of Kevin Grady. But again, Tom, in these conditions, and I don't know if you're at home, you can really see how hard it's raining, but it really is. And it was Brian Smith, maybe, who stripped it. And then, uh, uh, third lost fumble by the Wolverines. In the heavy rain, five Michigan fumbles now. They've lost three of them. Charlie Weiss injured, torn ACL and MCL. Watches from the sideline. After the turnover, the Irish take over at their own seven. Robert Hughes gets the call. Backtracks to try to get to the outside and then tackled by Eze. And the Irish forcing the turnover. Two familiar numbers. Number 27, Bruton there, along with 28, Kyle McCarthy. And remember last week how they, those guys really came up with a big turnover against San Diego State as well. And also Sergio Brown, who played so well. Here's the play last week. This is as the Aztecs were about to go up yeah. two touchdowns, and Sullivan stripped by McCarthy and Bruton. The Irish recovered, went on to win the game. So similarities there as the draw play handoff goes to Robert Hughes, stopped about a yard short of the first down. Yeah, I noticed Jimmy Clausen put gloves on. I mean, you know, we said he probably hadn't played the weather like this going up in Southern California. And again, Mike Hay with the offensive coordinator calling on his two big backs, Robert Hughes and sometimes James Aldrich in this poor weather to kind of pound it out. Is that sort of a paid advertisement? Was it? Did play in this kind of weather in sunny Southern California? Yeah, it is. I'm part of the Chamber of Commerce. It's here locally for the weekend. Third down in a yard. Run blitz comes from Michigan, and Hughes spins his way yeah. to a first down. They, you know, every now and then, you just really need to just pull your way through for a first down, and, and Robert Hughes did right there. 237 pounds. First, good vision, the early contact, the spin, and then he breaks through the tackle of Stevie Brown, the, the uh, free safety. Really nifty guy, 237 pounds, those real light feet. Twisting, turning, picking up the first. Just at the sideline now, replaced by Allen. First down from the 18-yard line. Shotgun, Clawson. Handed off to Allen. Mondo with some fresh legs, but only able to get a yard against the Michigan front. Look at the rain. Expected it actually, and it held off for a while. That's when all the points were scored. Since the rain started, we've had a punt fest. Band got the rain gear on. Second down and eight. Hughes. The line of scrimmage, nothing more. Matter of fact, didn't make the line of scrimmage. Lost about a yard. Brandon Harrison. I say the ball came out. Yeah, Michigan is saying so, but I think the officials say you know, maybe. Now, yeah. But yeah, I promise you, in this kind of weather, if you're a defensive lineman, if you're a defensive coordinator, Scott Schieffer, you're saying, hey, strip the ball here. Get your hands in there, try to rip it out. Oh, boy, he did a helmet to helmet shot there. He's down, and then the ball comes out. Important down for Michigan's defense. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Lawson undecided about what to do with it. Being chased, 
finally lets it go. And it's incomplete, intended for Paris. So a punting situation for the Irish with 12 seconds left in the quarter. It is really coming down. If you're Rich Rodriguez, I say really come after the punter, right? You just, just don't know about the snap. The last one was low. So Eric Most standing at his own five-yard line. Donovan Warren awaiting the punt. Most they come after it, and they got a piece of it. Yep. Yeah, I just think I think he have to do that. You know, you have in every I'd rush every punter this kind of weather. And he goes out of bounds at about the 48 of Michigan, where they'll take over when we come back. whether you always want to come after the punter, and that's just what Michigan does. Kind of a low snap, Bobblezik was right through his hands, partial block by Michigan, sets him up in very good field position. Their own 48-yard line with four seconds left in the third quarter. McGuffey. That was a fake, yeah, fake, fake yeah. 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 And it's uh, stopped at the line of scrimmage. Three kept it. As the third quarter comes to a close in the rain at Notre Dame Stadium with the Irish leading 28-17 after a scoreless third. Back after these messages from your local NBC station, you're watching Notre Dame football brought to you by Coke Zero. Hi, I'm Michael. F fourth quarter, the Leprechaun getting the crowd fired up in the rain. The players were helping too. Second down and 11 for Michigan on the first play of the fourth quarter. Fumbled football. Still loose and picked up. Smith returned to interception for a touchdown last year. He returned to fumble for a touchdown this year. The extra point is good by Brandon Walker. And the Irish have feasted on turnovers today. And he's yeah, foot. Yeah, just never got the handle. Looks like he actually took his eye off it a little bit when the ball was being snapped back. But you see a pretty athletic inside linebacker, Brian Smith. I said, remember he had that big interception against Matt Ryan in Boston College last year, returned it for 25 yards. And you know, this was a team last, uh, came, they came into this game, I think, with some big question marks. But boy, they have to feel a lot better about themselves after this performance. And so did uh, the Wolverines under Rich Rodriguez come in with some big question marks. They don't feel quite as good after their numerous miscues today. They've shown signs of competence. And as the water gushes down the aisles here at Notre Dame Stadium, nobody seems to mind. Where's the sump pump? Do you have a sump pump up here in the booth? Here's the new one. Fans are really revved up now. They've waited a long time to cheer this hard. Burkhart will boot it towards Sissoko and Harrison. Squid kick picked up by Sissoko. Hard to change direction, and the ball loose again. Well, Michigan might have gotten it back that time. They were certainly the first to fall on it. You know, you know who caused that fumble? Oh, number 37. Mike Anello <laughs> caused that fumble. I'm telling you, I saw him. I watch him every time. He's relentless. He runs down. He's relentless. Yeah. Michigan recovers that. That's the seventh fumble by Michigan. Kevin Grady covered it that time for the Wolverines. Well, see number 37 right at the screen? Gets but his, his helmet on the ball, yep. comes right out. I mean, some guys, you know, you can't make the story's incredible. He's an absolute walk-on. He's a 5'9", 180-pound walk-on. And uh, boy, is he living the dream, as he told us yesterday. 
he told us his class schedule yesterday, and he ticked off all these classes, <laughs> finance classes, very impressive. And he said, oh, 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 also guitar. Yeah, one unit guitar class. And I saw him as he was leaving. He had a guitar, which was taller than he was in that case. <laughs> There's the he schedule. Borrowed it from a, from a buddy. Yeah. And as Charlie Weiss said, it's worth repeating. We'll all be working for him someday. <laughs> you and I, too. One can only hope. <laughs> McGuffey. And... We invite you to go to NBCSports.com immediately after the telecast for the Vonage Post Game Report. You'll see the live press conferences of Charlie Weiss and Rich Rodriguez. Also catch interviews, analysis, full game highlights, all at NBCSports.com. Well, you think, you think the doctors are going to let him do that? I don't know. Yeah. No, no I, need, is there? I, mean, I know he's going to want to. And we mentioned you know, Joe Paterno had something similar a few years ago and coached the next several weeks up from the press box. It's, it's, it, it's been weather, but it's been good play by the Irish. It's been great special teams play that set up the offense. That ball kind of sailed on him coming out of his hand yeah, in well, the wet yeah. football. And, and, and even as big as Stephen Freed is, 6'6", 230, you know, probably has really large, strong hands, it is hard to hang on to that football. Feels like it's let up a little bit now, Tom. has not three I don't know if this is a quarterback draw design but he crossed him as he's upended by Kyle McCarthy yeah how, how about the two safeties McCarthy that's his ninth tackle Bruton has 13 tackles the two of them the two safeties right here number 28 McCarthy 15 stops last week that was his ninth tackle today talk about filling the hole sure tackler he got uh, eight yards but short of the first down Bruton have really puts up 22 tackles between them. Mesco will punt. There's Allen. He's running with it. He know he faked one earlier. That's kind of that Australian rules run and punt. And he did a good one, too. At the 11-yard line, it goes out of bounds. Looking for a little hole to keep it, maybe, but nothing there, so he booted it. Got a good punt out of it. 52 yards. Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste and zero calories. By Liberty Mutual Insurance. Responsibility. What's your policy? By New Gillette Body Wash. Unleash the power of your shower. And by McDonald's. From soggy Notre Dame Stadium, Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Alex Flanagan. Irish take over after the good punt by Mesco at their own 11. And hand it to Robert Hughes. And you'll want to tune in to Saturday Night Live tonight for a very special host. Hi, I'm Michael Phelps. And yes, I'm hosting the season premiere of Saturday Night Live this week with musical guest Lil Wayne. Go Blue. And a Go Blue shout out to the Wolverines. He trained in Ann Arbor, a good friend with Braylon Edwards. Former Wolverine receiver who will be in action tomorrow night. And Michael Phelps hosting Saturday Night Live. We had Michael Wilps fed, uh, Phelps weather about 10 minutes ago, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> a hesitation move after he got the handoff by Hughes, and it gets him close to the first down. I tell you, you know, just eating up some clock, a big back like that can really eat clock trying to protect a lead. And remember Charlie Weiss last week said, hey, I want to pound it. They didn't really pound it too well last no, week, right. but today, indeed, they have. 22 carries, rushes, 93 yards for the team. And Hughes has 14 for 64 and a couple of touchdowns. Very close to that first down. So third and one. A little confusion. It looks like Jimmy's going to call timeout. So Clawson calls a timeout. Time of possession still in favor of the Wolverines, but oh, those fumbles. Irish with the lead. There are a few things worse than being soaking wet and down 35 17. Those guys don't care if they're wet. No. Four 
Michigan turnovers have led to 21 Irish points. And the one Notre Dame miscue only resulted in a field goal. Third down and one. Awesome keeps. And it's going to be close. Well, maybe. Perhaps he, uh, yes, he looks where they mark it. He did cross the yellow line. Hey, uh, now, now the football <laughs> took back a little bit, so this is going to be close. See the one official had his foot marking forward progress, and then the other official who spotted the ball moved it back a few inches. I'm never sure exactly how they do that. Yeah. They are. They should be. Sure. That's what they say. Line, of course, is not official. The Michigan players are in the way, but uh, it is a first down. Okay. Jimmy Clausen making like Brady Quinn. Remember how Brady used oh, yeah. to you know, sneak for first downs didn't three we, or four times? Didn't we say he'd never been stopped? Yeah, I don't think so. Well, nice surge there by Jimmy Clausen, who's really managing the game very, very well, Tom, I think. You know, he's avoided a couple sacks. He's thrown the ball away when he's had to. A couple of touchdown passes. See him growing into this job as Notre Dame quarterback, making progress with each start toward the end of last year and the first two games this year. Over Hughes. Hughes. Draws a crowd stacked up after a yard game. And if you're going to be the quarterback in Notre Dame, you cannot be afraid of the stage, right? He knew exactly what he was getting into when he came here, and he wants it. He thrives under it. He was saying to us and said publicly before, hey, if you're the head coach, the quarterback in Notre Dame, you're going to be on the stage, don't mind it. Second down and 10 for the Irish. James Aldridge in the tailback spot. Hand the ball to Aldridge. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage. And Jimmy Clausen talked about uh, being in the glare of Notre Dame quarterback. It's good at times, bad at times, and um, but m most of all, it's it's you know great being a quarterback in Notre Dame. Brady Quinn, you know, Joe Montana, just following those names, it's it's pretty spectacular to see all those quarterbacks that have come through Notre Dame, and you know I'm I'm the I'm the next one, I guess. So um, you know it's it's pretty special. You forgot two other number sevens, John Ewart, who won a Heisman Trophy, and Joe Theismann, who had a pretty good career. They both wore his number. Now he faces a third down and ten. Quick toss. It's complete to Paris. And Robbie Paris with his first reception of the season, tackled by Morgan Trent. Well, Michigan's going to get back in this game. They're going to have to do something on special teams to give them a spark. Maybe another, you know, punt block. It isn't raining as hard as it was earlier. Or a big return. Something to give their quarterback excellent field position. Moss to punt. Nine and a half minutes and counting. And they came after him. He got it off. Got it off. Low line drive. Bouncing. Warren says stay away from it. It'll be downed at the 30-yard line. 9-13 on the clock. 35-17 Irish. <laughs> 35-17 in the rain at Notre Dame Stadium. Looks Irish like bidding in to go 2-0. Oh. I see Nick Sheridan at quarterback now for the Wolverines. Nick Sheridan, who started game one against Utah, hit 62% of his passes, 138 yards, had a rushing TD and a passing TD. He was picked off once from nearby Saline, Michigan. Faces a blitz, first time out of the box, and completes the pass to Odoms. Yeah, it's a pretty nice start, right? You come out first play, you get blitz, but you read the blitz, throw the ball right to the receiver for a completion. So three, two, and all the way until now, signaling in from the sideline. Michigan State, the Irish opponent in East Lansing next week. You know, just you, you see the state of the two programs. One team in flux at quarterback, right, with Michigan, and certainly Notre Dame kind of settled in with Jimmy Clausen. Of course, Rich Rodriguez has not had a chance to recruit 
an ideal quarterback for his spread offense yet having just taken over by the Michigan. And Sheridan going downfield. There's a flag down. Bab made a nice catch, and then the ball comes loose. It's a fumble. No, and they said it's out. They say he was out. There's a flag back up field. 45 yards if it stands as Sheridan yeah. airs it out. How about Nick Sheridan coming in? Giving him a little lift. Started their first game as father used to be an assistant. His father was an assistant uh, at Notre Dame yeah. and at Michigan. Absolutely. Now right. with the New York Giants. We talked to him this week, so he dad was on a coached linebackers for Bob Davy. Perfect throw. Real nice catch. Strong hands by Bab. Called him out. That's why it wasn't a fumble. So Sheridan has the Wolverines down at the 20-yard line of the Irish. Hands to McGuffey. McGuffey, so <laughs> hard to bring down. Wow. It looks like a video game with him, doesn't it? Bouncing off people. He will get about five yards. About five yards shy of that. First down line brought to you today by Xerox. Red five got him to 122 yards on the day in 23 carries. Sheridan on second down. Pass complete to McGuffey. And stopped short of the first down by Kyle McCarthy. Kyle McCarthy. How many tackles now? Ten for McCarthy. Bruton has 15. Yeah, they, they, you know, we talked to Kyle McCarthy yesterday, lives with a bunch of guys on the team off campus. They call it the kingdom because they have a bunch of unwanted bats and rats and mice and stuff like that. You called it animal house, but he corrected <laughs> it. Yes. <laughs> the kingdom. Two safeties leading the way. Third down. Blitz. Sheridan's pass is picked up. David Bruton. You know, 16 tackles, tackle for loss, forced fumble, now has an interception. Hurry the quarterback once on the blitz. Played some great special teams. They play in the band next week at halftime. Returned at 40 yards, and Coach Weiss says the uh, NFL scouts are drooling over him. I remember he said to us a couple weeks ago, I want more interceptions and fewer tackles. Well, he's got a lot of tackles, but he got the interception there. tackles by David Bruton today tie his career high just to put an exclamation point on it he has that interception and a 40 yard return what a, what a game and they still haven't stepped off the penalty now they're doing so well this is going to be a real transition year for Rich Rod Rodriguez's offense you know Tom just as you mentioned these are two fine quarterbacks, but not the kind of quarterbacks he would have recruited to run his spread offense. Horse, co horse collar penalty against uh, Michigan. That's what punched up. Uh, got him the extra 15 yards. It's a new rule this year. Horse collar tackle makes it uh, first down at the 41, where James Aldridge has a nice run, and he fumbles the football. Stack them, it will be Notre Dame ball. Michael Floyd making the recovery. Spinning, churning, turning. James Aldridge. Ball out. Good strip by Stevie Brown. And a real hustle play by yeah. Michael Floyd. Really? The Irish have punted on their last six possessions, offensive possessions, but they've eaten up the clock and have not turned the ball over. Fumble recovery for a touchdown. Aldridge. It's a loss of a couple. Let's go back to David Bruton's interception. Jameson made that play. Excuse me, Tom. Kind of day that he has had. Just a little high ball to the tight end. You know, good catch by David Bruton, who's done 
everything well. Just kind of worked his way up through special teams a couple of years ago. Got a start. He got to start last year. And uh, boy, has he made an opportunity. <laughs> wow. He had a pretty good day last week as well. We talked to him last week. And an engaging young man. Born in Winchester, Kentucky. He's a cousin of Tyson Gay, the world champion 100 and 200 meters who had such a disappointing Beijing Olympics with uh, an injured hamstring and left over from the U.S. Olympic trials. And he was saying to us, you know, he's got a three-year-old son named Jaden. And that is his pride and joy. When he's not going to class or practicing, he's with his son, Jaden, who's usually at the stadium with a number 27 jersey on the front and knucklehead on the back. <laughs> I like the knucklehead part. He said, that's my name for him. <laughs> Fourth down and a couple of yards, and the clock down under five minutes. The name goes for it on fourth down. Clawson through the hands of Allen. It was going to have the first down, too. Instead, the ball goes over to Michigan, but they trail 35-17. Thirty-five seventeen. as the Irish have taken advantage of Michigan turnovers today. Wolverines have the ball at the 34. And that one's intercepted. Second straight interception by the Irish. This is Gary Gray. Gary Gray with his first career interception. The sophomore from Columbia, South Carolina, who didn't see action all last season, getting a chance to play and picking off just a team that is now brimming with confidence. I think they came in maybe a little unsure of themselves after what happened last week, but boy, they have played well in all three phases. And that's what Charlie Weiss said to us last week. He said, hey, I'll be surprised if we don't play much better than a year ago in all three phases. And he said, I expected a lot more emotion, and he's gotten it today. Look at the defensive summary. That was the second interception and a 41-yard return by Gray as Sheridan was picked off from back-to-back -back passes. Corwin Brown, a former Wolverine, has to be pretty happy with the way his defense is played. He's the defensive coordinator. Hughes. Hughes. Slammed down, lost his helmet in the process. And if you're just joining us, Notre Dame coach Charlie Weiss on the sideline and crutches injured in the first half. It's rolled up. The diagnosis is torn ACL, torn MCL of his left knee. He's taken off in a golf cart at halftime. But has remained on the sideline here in the second half. And we're also told that he will, in fact, hold his post-game press conference. MCL, ACL, torn. As he was rolled up on the sideline. Jersey guy. Hughes. Inside the 10. Well, there's no better feeling, I think, for an offensive line is when you can run the football when the defense knows you're going to. And, and this offensive line we've talked about uh, much maligned, but boy, they have played well, particularly in the, in the pass protection game for two weeks, but now getting some running game going as well. Michigan has turned the ball over six times today. And you can't win doing that. Hughes stepped out of a couple of tackles at the line of scrimmage. He's got the yard short of the first down. We're inside three minutes. Now the, the pass protection has been pretty amazing yeah. for Charlie Weiss's offensive line, the same line that and backs picking up the blitz. Yeah. Same line that gave up those NCAA record 58 sacks last year. I remember Sam Young said to us last week that, you know, that immediately after that Stanford game last year, their last of the year, they flew back and they started the next day to prepare for this season. They just did not want to be embarrassed again. And boy, they have played uh, very, very well. Again, as we said at the very top, a really talented front seven. Fourth down, and they'll go for it again. Fake it. Pass to the end zone. And intercepted. Well, they have some confidence in Michael Floyd. Intended there. for Michael Floyd yeah. and intercepted by Morgan Trent. 
lot of confidence Charlie Weiss has in Michael Floyd. Almost had it. Yeah. Pretty good defensive play. But on the carom lying on his back, able to make the minute interception Trent. Well, time now for our Liberty Mutual Legends of the Game. Lou Holtz coached 132 games in 11 seasons at Notre Dame, guiding his teams to an overall record of 100 wins, 30 losses, two ties. He holds the Irish record for most games coached, and of course led his school to the 1988 National Championship. And today, the statue of Holtz unveiled here, went out for the ceremonial coin toss to start the game, and then took a bow with his 88 National Champions on the field in the first quarter. You know, the amazing thing about that EA team, their first game, they, as you mentioned earlier, Tom, opened up with Michigan. They did not score on offense, scored 19 points on special teams. Kick return for touchdowns, four field goals. And that kind of set the tone for the rest of that uh, remarkable year for the Irish. As you saw there, Threat is back at quarterback for Michigan. I'll tell you one thing, although this may be a tough year as they transition into the um, the spread offense. They, they found a pretty good running back in Sam McGuffey. Don't you think, Tom? Oh, wow. just... He is really impressive as now flags come flying. Some hot tempers over there on the sideline. Carson Butler is the tight end to the Wolverines. Getting a lecture from Coach Rod. Coach Rodriguez, of course, coming over from West Virginia, which was kind of a messy parting. It's divorce, yeah. And then uh, some of the Michigan faithful thought he didn't respect the Michigan traditions enough. Some of them he thought. After the play was over, personal foul, blow to the helmet, number five offense. Number five was ejected from the game. So Carson Butler ejected from the game for that blow to the helmet. And here's uh, the replay of what happened. Oh, there it is, obviously, on, uh, on Woko. Uh, but and uh, Coach Rod giving him. But Coach Rod said, too, that some of those traditions he wasn't even aware of. He thought they were small things. He didn't know about them, and he said it was kind of uh, blown out of proportion. But well, it's, you know, it's a delicate balance, yeah. I think, when you're trying to change something, which he was hired to change their offensive, but to balance that with their rich tradition they have in Michigan. He said those two things, the, the messy leaving of West Virginia and then the carping by some of the Michigan faithful kind of took all the joy out yeah. of the transition for being named head coach at a place as prestigious as Michigan, the all-time leader in college football in wins and winning percentage. Well, when he gets his guys in that offense, trust me, they're going to score a lot of points. We An saw, encore carry for McGuffey. We saw a lot of his teams when he was at West Virginia, yeah. Tom, over the years. And uh, you know, he, he's one of the real innovative guys in this spread offense. But, uh, you know, Different type of personality inherited Lloyd Carr's personnel. Good players, but just a different style. Well, you know, this uh, rivalry, one of the greatest in all of college football, maybe a little tattered around the edges because of maybe the teams aren't up to their normal high standards, but it's still Michigan Notre Dame, and it's going to be a huge lift for the Irish to get this win against the Wolverines today. Mesco with the punt. Allen. They get him down. What do they do? Zach Johnson will block the punt early. Well, how about the coach zero play of the day, Tom? It could be given to a lot of them, but how about the one to Golden Tate? Look at the cushion. Almost seven yards. Kind of fakes the slant. You know, he and then he a the little slant and then go. And you can only do that when you have terrific protection, which he did. And uh, I tell you, Golden Tate, in his first two weeks, have run by a couple of defensive backs for touchdowns. And that's the Coke Zero offensive play of the game. Here's the victory formation by the Irish as Carson takes a knee. Well, the big question mark lingering now is uh, what about Coach Weiss? As they head to East Lansing to take on the Spartans. They don't, that's, no that's, mercy, that, no mercy, <laughs> no, oh boy. no mercy despite the uh, torn MCL and ACL, despite being soaking wet already, he gets the Gatorade bath, and I think he loved it. Yeah. You know, they go to Michigan State next week, and uh, you know, where will he be, sidelines or press box? Yeah. Knowing Charlie, I think he's going to fight to be on the sideline. He'll be fighting the doctors for that, for that honor. 
Tough day for Coach Rod. Too many turnovers for the Wolverines to overcome. Six takeaways by the Irish. Four fumbles and two interceptions. And the final score, Notre Dame 35 and Michigan 17. That's the final score of today's game, which was presented by Coke Zero. And we'll be back in 30 seconds to hear from Coach Weiss on the Vonage postgame report. Back at Notre Dame Stadium, where we welcome you to the Vonage postgame report. After Notre Dame's 35-17 victory over Michigan, let's go down to Alex Flanagan with Coach Weiss. Well, Charlie Weiss, I can finally catch up with you now. Yeah, right. Hey, but listen, Thanks, what, what big question mark, if there was one, did you have answered today in this game? Well, the question mark was how, whether we were going to show up in the first quarter, and I think that I think that, that was a resounding yes. You know, Michigan battled back there, but, you know, our guys played for 60 minutes today. And when, the, when it got real rainy and we just had to just play conservative, but at least we had a lead where we could go ahead and put the, put the game away and make a couple plays. Describe what this win does for your confidence. I'll tell you what, this team after last week wasn't really sure if they were any good or not. That, you know, was it the fourth quarter or the first three quarters? But I think today you showed it was the fourth quarter and hopefully it's a sign of good things to come. All right, a quick update on your injury. You told me you tore your ACL. Uh, I, I got my Tommy Brady injury, ACL and MCL. So, Tommy, you got nothing on me, okay? All right, Tom, give Coach Weiss a call and uh, give him some advice. All right, Alex. So Coach Weiss will join his team now for the playing of the uh, Notre Dame alma mater. Notre Dame, our mother. A lot of smiles on the Irish side today. Pat Coons. Always pick him out. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Clausen. Tradition, isn't it? Yeah, indeed. Let's go back to Alex. Hey, David Bruton, a number of big plays for you today. What was the biggest for you? Um, probably the fumble in the red zone. You know, they were going in to score, and that was a way for them to get momentum. And we stepped up as a defense and, you know, made a play and turned the game around. What clicked for you today? Excuse me? What clicked for you today? You know, it's Michigan. It's a big rivalry. You know, if you don't feel it, something's wrong with you. It's just a big game, and we all came out and performed. What do you think about the team's confidence? How much confidence does a win like this give you? Oh, tremendous confidence. You know, especially on defense, you know, we can play with anybody. And offense did, did their job and played well also. And it just just bodes well for the rest of the season. All right, speaking of offense, we have Jimmy right here. Hey, Jimmy, I saw you do more leading on the team today than I have seen you in the last year. What was your confidence level like? It was real high today. You know, uh, we needed, we know coming into this game that we need to, you know, get ready to go. And, uh, you know, the offense did a great job, especially the offensive line. You know, they're the reason why we won this game today. The offensive line, the defense. You know, they played, defense played real good. You know, got us the ball, uh, you know, in, inside our own 20 in the red zone in the first two series. And, uh, you know, it was a great victory for us. Was there a moment in this game for you where things really started firing, clicking for you? I think, I think things start firing the whole game, you know, uh, to be honest. I think uh, after last, last week's fourth quarter against San Diego State, you know, we really came along offensively, defensively, and special teams, and we just carried it over from last week. Jimmy, what about the move to go deep early and often in this game? That's one of the things uh, the coaches wanted to do. You know, they said we need to stretch the field early. You know, um, their front four and their front seven is a real good uh, front seven, Michigan's is. And, uh, you know, I think we need to slow them down a little bit and then start running the ball. All right, you're talking about Michigan's front seven. How about your own guys? You have not been sacked in two games. 
I, I can't say enough things about my offensive line. You know, they're, they're a real tight group. And, um, you know, coming into this year, they weren't approved a lot. You know, last year wasn't the great, greatest for them. But, you know, they came out. And I think you get the whole country can see that they've improved. And, you know, they're one of the best offensive lines in the country. They certainly are becoming it. And how about Golden Tate, Jimmy? Golden? He's great. You know, you guys seen him out here last week, this week. You know, he's a great player. All right, congratulations, Jimmy. Tell him back up to you guys. All right, Alex, is Clawson not sacked for the first two games? How about that? We'll be back here for more from Notre Dame Stadium, but right now, let's go back to New York, check in with Jimmy Roberts for some scores in college football today.